She didn't come here to play. I did yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Saw it here first. <laughs> Queer. Hi friends and welcome back to a brand new episode here on Queer. Boom. This week, Nadia brings the energy to the queer stage, I mean set. She runs an LGBTQ plus event company here in Barbados where they host many successful games nights, parties, beach limes, bar nights, all for us queers on this little island. In this energetic and entertaining, Nadia makes me laugh so much episode, we dive into what it's like growing up in Barbados for Nadia, pansexuality, and is it easier being a lesbian in the Caribbean? Oh, and we also talk about all the LGBTQ events she hosts. Don't forget the entire story is on our podcast. You can check that out at Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Bram, bram. <laughs> As I say every single week, just for as little as $3 a month, you can become a Patreon to queer and help support the queer journey. Now, without further ado, don't forget guys to like, subscribe, and comment below. And Boom. look for all the shit. Let's see. Don't get all inside your feelings, the side effects from the drink. the queer community was necessarily yeah but i knew that something was different what was one of those first moments where you felt something different party <laughs> i mean it was more like when i was younger i would think girls are so beautiful and then i would hear stuff like oh you know a woman could also say that somebody else is pretty and it means nothing so i thought okay well maybe that's it but then when I got older and I was in like first form at school, there was this girl and I was like, oh my, Gosh. like I like her, like if Party. I probably should have liked a guy. Yeah. So I was like, okay, make her my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> Pull them in clothes quickly. <laughs> when did you finally like, come to terms with it and like, I guess come out? When I was at secondary school and I had this whole epiphany, like, oh my God, this girl, I like her, like how I should like a guy. Yeah. She told me that she thought I was pretty and I didn't understand it. I mean, at this time I had a boyfriend. It wasn't necessarily disgusted, but curiosity. I felt, yeah, it was a level of curiosity, but it was foreign. So I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It was like, I wanted to know, but I didn't want people to know that I wanted to know what it really was. Cause obviously I was oblivious. I was a novice to the entire like sexuality and stuff. I just knew about a girl's like boys and boys like girls. That's it. Yeah. Finding out all these different things. It was like, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Something's going on here. Yes. We didn't like hook up or anything, but she started to kind of show me the role. She was the first person that I thought knew herself well enough to say, I don't give a damn what other people think. And even if in my 20s or my 30s, I wow. don't feel the same way, at least right now, I'm figuring out me one day at a time and I, that was so empowering for me so i loved her for that did she see something in you no she she just liked me yeah and she liked your energy and... yeah she liked my energy and that's why i always say i'm pansexual because i'm very attracted to person's energy yes you have to have the physical but yeah. for me it's more than that like what really catches my attention is how you treat me, how you speak to me, how you approach to me, all of these things, it's, it's a package. You can be gorgeous and you you approach me, you're a douchebag and I'm like, eh, keep it, keep it moving, keep yeah. that energy. Carry on, <laughs> keep walking. I think she just saw me, thought I was cute and took a risk, but she wasn't pushy, she wasn't trying to push the sexuality or me or anything, but I think it was God sent. Must be quite quite like surreal moment for you, you know, where you're like the belief system that you were brought up in and it's just like heteronormativity. And then this one person comes and like you've had feelings for your life, but not really understanding them properly. Yeah. And then she comes in and she's like, You can like women too. And you're like, Whoa! Eureka! Yeah. That makes sense now. <laughs> <laughs> Did you start dating girls right after that? Uh, no, I actually had a boyfriend, and if he's watching this, I'm pretty sure that he's like, oh, I knew it, I knew it. Yeah. 
<laughs> hey, boyfriend. But, X. X. It was kind of confusing because I really did love um, the guy, but it was this whole new world I was opening my eyes to that was like a possibility. You know, sometimes when people tell you or your parents tell you, you can't have that, it's like, I want it. I want it. I want it. But I'll vote me. I'll do whatever I can to get, to get it. <laughs> so I was so having true. a moment like that. And yeah. I don't think he understood that. And I didn't understand it either. So I mean. You're so young too. Yeah, I was really young at the time. So things went haywire. But that that's what happens when you're young and you're figuring it out. And he was really cool, really amazing. But, you know, obviously we went our separate ways. Because I yeah. was like. I put my toes in the water and I was like, sprint. <laughs> yeah, no slowing down for her, her okay? <laughs> Watch out. I think to speak to your point too, of just like, you know, you, def you had that relationship with that guy and you loved him. It speaks so highly of the fluidity of sexuality, you know? It's constantly evolving for each of us. And like, you know, identifying as lesbian and pansexual just, that's your experience. That yeah. is that is you speaking to like being with guys and enjoying those moments and then primarily being with girls, you know, like the possibility is limitless. Yeah, like for me, people will be like, oh, but she's bisexual. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And I really hated people telling me that I was bisexual. And I mean, nothing is wrong with being bisexual. Let me just put that disclaimer out there. It just wasn't what you identified as, right yeah. There. So, but for some reason, when people said it to me, it didn't sit well. I used to be like, no, I'm Nadia. I'm not, I'm not anything. Don't put me in a box. You know, they say, don't put baby in a corner. Don't put <laughs> yeah, me in a box. Yeah. So, you know, don't put try Nadia to... <laughs> in a corner, people. No boxes. No. Why did you feel like people were like um, identifying you as bisexual? Because I had this boyfriend and then I started to explore sexuality and what sexuality really was because as... You know, I said it was all about girl like boy, boy likes girl. So coming into this whole new world of figuring out a girl could like a girl and a boy could like a boy and a girl could be more masculine presenting or a male could be more feminine presenting. Yeah. And it was like, whoa, like, what is all of this? Like, this is interesting. So I don't have to be stuck in wearing skirts and heels all the time. I could switch it up. Because I know back in the day when we were growing up, we're the same age, by the way. Um, there's a... <laughs> Let me just throw that in there. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of like stereotypes. Did you feel pressure to fit into a box, a box of mm. what a lesbian should be or no. dress like? Um, I don't think I felt pressured. More so I felt like I wanted to figure out what I want, how I want to present myself. What do people that are more, you know, masculine presenting look like? And then I found out about stems and stems studs and androgyny and tomboys so i was like okay well that's cool you know i could dress really girly today and then dress kind of boyish tomorrow being able to have that experience because i know a lot of people aren't able to like go out and be like okay like i feel more comfortable like this i feel more confident like this i Absolutely. feel more myself like this yeah. and that's really empowering to like be growing up figuring it out and being able to express yourself in these different ways and Absolutely. not feel like pressured. That's that's nice though, you know, you're like going through trial and error, just like fluidly finding yourself. Yourself. Whereas like some people, I, I would imagine get so caught up in trying to fit into this one stereotype to be this person. But when you, the more you learn, the more you actually understand that sexuality is on a spectrum and has different expressions. Like everybody's unique yeah. and you're able to express yourself the way you want to. So that's very beautiful. When you were at school, did you face any serious, like did, was there a lot of homophobia around um, or discrimination? Yeah, there was. And this is the Caribbean. This is a very Christian based society as much as, you know, it's sometimes not very Christian. Um, and I say that, yeah, I said it. <laughs> no, I, I needed to have that moment because- You, you had it. <laughs> the room was silent for you. <laughs> I wouldn't say people really attacked me or my sexuality as much as other persons. I was like Captain Save a Hole back at school. I didn't really experience what persons who dress more masculine or more feminine from either sides. I didn't experience so that. So this leads me into my next question. There's a 
There is a, a big discussion where um, people say that being a lesbian in the Caribbean is a lot easier than being gay. What are your thoughts? I agree. Why? Because media has made it more palatable to accept homosexuality within the female community versus it being with the male. And I actually spoke to a heterosexual man and he explained to me, he was like, okay, I could see myself with two women. I can't see myself with two men. So I will be rooting for that versus that. And I was like, he's like, yeah, because I can't see it. I don't want it. So why, you know? And I was like, hmm. Media and the idea of a man still being able to be with either one or both of the women sexually, and it's not even anything else but sexually, from the heteronormative idea. So it's almost like fetishizing uh, women or lesbian women to being together that it's yeah, that is it's or, okay. Yeah, that's horrible. <laughs> it is. On the other hand, and this is my perspective, a lot of the hate that goes to men is based on men not being comfortable with their own sexuality. Men Absolutely. not being themselves. A lot of men are not confident within themselves. A lot of men project. Men, yeah. yeah, they project because they are not able to even figure it out. They're not able to freely express it. And they're that's scared how you to get, learn too. Yeah. Then they're like, oh, well, I have to put on this show. I need to be yeah. more masculine presenting. I need to be very macho. I need to stand my ground and make my presence seen as a masculine man and not know how to be a masculine man or be a man and still have a level of femininity because, yeah. you know, that's I, okay. So I've been having, I had this conversation this, this weekend with, with like my friends and my parents and what I've noticed is that you'll notice a lot of Barbadian men are not very confident in their heterosexuality. No, they're so not. So in their straightness. And they feel like they have to put on this like overindulged not- toxic masculinity vibe when they're, even when they're communicating with each other, almost trying to like one up the masculinity in each other to prove that they are more, more masculine and not vulnerable, not emotional, not, like, in a, in a word that they would use in Barbados, not a pussy at all, which is so traumatic for them, I would imagine. Always living in that space where you can't show any vulnerability to each other. It's kind of sad. I understand that the community in Barbados, and this is how they have been brought up, so I have a lot of empathy for people, but I want people to know it's okay to be vulnerable. It is okay to be emotional at times it's normal human behavior you know lgbtq people aren't going to hit on every hit on you or shouldn't be in a place to make you feel that you're going to be discriminated against because that's terrible also a lot of the time though when you see lgbtq persons and a supposedly heterosexual male masculine macho person and you hear some kind of oh this person was hitting on them you know we can smell. You know what I mean? You know, you know, you know our sensors be working. Like, let's not pretend, you know? I do believe that sometimes um, LGBTQ persons can cross the line. And then I think that sometimes um, heterosexual people don't handle it well. So when you say A, you, could, you have to say B. Oh, right? absolutely. But it's about educating. It's about learning yourself it's about showing compassion it's about you know it's about falling in love with yourself too yeah that's what i said secure. like love love you and be so yeah so secure within who you are just pretty much like yeah just total respect yourself. yeah regardless respect. It, it has to go both ways absolutely so family how was your family dynamic of you and um your sexuality coming out to them etc um well, when I was 13, my mom asked me if I liked girls. Wow. And I said, yeah. <laughs> you know, my mom was really loving in terms of it. Like, she never made me feel uncomfortable with my sexuality. It's good. And, yeah. And um, my, I had a few family members that were kind of like, you know, don't tell your grandmother. Because my grandmother was very, like, that too. Christian. I and, got that you know, too. and everybody made me feel really afraid of telling my grand. In the midst of everything, 
my grand eventually found out and my grand was like y'all talking about nadia well i know that nadia likes girls that's all right and everybody was floored everybody was floored they could not believe my it God. my cousin called me she was like Oh, granny knows. I was like, knows what? She's like, granny knows. I was like, no, what? She's like, she no, no. I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that was cool. And she was very like, you know, funny and yeah. sassy with it. And That's then I think good. after that, everybody kind of mellowed out. Yeah, so that was cool. My family was like the real MVPs. Yeah, they like totally like <laughs> embraced you and allowed you to just like yeah, find it. Yeah, to figure it out. Wow. What does pansexuality mean to you? I know you don't like to say you label or anything, but like yeah. I want to understand the Bayesian understanding of pansexuality. A lot of people think the pansexuality, when I say it, they're like, so you, you like, you, you're, you're bisexual in a sense. Like when they explain it, because they're like basing it on people I've been in a relationship with. Yes. Right? And I explain it this way in the simplest form. I love who I love. And that's what pansexuality is to me. Yeah. And it doesn't matter skin. It doesn't matter your background, nothing. It just means if I meet you today and I can have an amazing conversation and my aura is drawn to you and I I feel tingly and I feel inspired and I feel motivated and I feel like all of these things that are so bliss, like your yeah. aura just, you know, gets all of that from me. And I mean, of course, you still have to be some kind of gorgeous, like. Like, come on. <laughs> like, come on. Well, you gotta you be know? there. You yeah. know, pansexuality is that. But, yeah. you know, beauty still is in the eyes of the beholder. So, despite people saying pansexuality is just connection. everything that you feel and connection and stuff like that, you still have a sense of what you like. Your palate is still gonna want something specific. Yeah. Right? I think it's so beautiful. I think pansexuality is um, really beautiful in the sense of you just focusing on your connection. Oh, yeah, Obviously, yeah. your attraction is there. And, and, mine, time, and that's why I but always create that connection first, too. Not to cut you, and I'm so sorry about that. But cut I her. Know, uh, so sorry, sorry, I sorry, I sorry. In terms, that's why I said pansexual lesbian. Yeah. It's because I know that my preference is more masculine presenting. So I would date a trans man. I would date a more masculine presenting woman. Where she's whether she's tomboy, she is stem, she is stud, she's people call them aggressor. Whatever. Can you um quickly talk to us about what stem and stud are? Oh yeah, sure. So. This is my expertise. <laughs> so, um, a tomboy would be somebody who feels more comfortable in baggies and sneakers. Whereas a stem, a stem usually would chill. Like I'm chilling with you and I will be chilling with you and I'll be wearing my clothes and I will feel whatever. And then tomorrow I might wake up and say, I just want to be fabulous and I'm going to go get my clip on my nails and I'm going to do my hair, throw on my wig, whatever, and put on like a nice sexy dress and kill it. And so that, it's like the versatility between yeah. masculine and feminine. Yeah. yeah. A stud now. Insert So a stud is somebody that is fully masculine presenting. Where you they they don't switch it up. Oh, that's why you did that whole little dance because that's your yeah, that's vibe, that's baby. baby. <laughs> the stud daddy's what? Yes, trick or treat for me. That's how I'm feeling. I'm like, studs, um, they're always staying in that masculine presentation. Yeah. Like they'll just dress. More masculine all the time. Okay, got it. Shit, y'all so, got me sweating. There you oh. got your, you got your um, lesbian vocabulary there. The ABCs <laughs> of the lesbian world. Got it's it. not always down to dress code, it's but it could, but it's still too. and yeah. Nice, I love that. Okay, you. And that's the tea for today. Ding. So you started a LGBTQ plus events company in Barbados where you host LGBTQ events like. First of all, amazing, much needed. The yes. visibility is it needed is. here. Yeah. So how did you how did you go about starting it? How, why did you want to start LGBTQ plus events company? When I was younger, 
I used to have this dream all the time. Yeah. And it was like you would go into this vault. And when you open this vault, it was all of these beautiful colors, red and like butterflies and like streamers. And it was just beautiful. And I always used to tell my mom, I'm when I get older, I want to open a club. Maybe about four years ago, I had this particular dream again. Wow. And when I had it, I told my friend, I was like, yo, what would you think about like having a club in Barbados for LGBTQ plus people? She was like, that would be kind of cool. So I found out there was Row Events. So if you guys are not following as well, Kita, also check out Row Events. And be below. when I first, I, as I told you, I went down the rabbit hole, I started to also delve into stuff in Barbados. There was somebody who was throwing parties on the low. And like down underground the, parties. On, on the low. Yeah. <laughs> I had attended one and I was like, oh, this is so cool. So in the, the newness of having this dream again, I'm like, okay, maybe this is a sign that I should do it. And I just sat down and I went through all the plans of everything that of how I was going to start it, what I was going to do, all the other things like years to come, what I would like to do as well. So I started doing a bucket list for LGBTQ plus events, basically. Wow. Uh... Yeah. And... Then I started it, scared, afraid, not sure who would show up, if anyone would show up, and people showed up. Wow. Yeah. How many people showed up to your first event? 150, a little bit wow. above that. Wow, yeah. that and is I, amazing. And I was really scared. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, what were some of the feelings that you were going through? Were you also scared of just like homophobia or like people being really negative towards you hosting this event? People being negative towards me hosting the event, as well as, sorry to say, sometimes we live like crabs in a barrel. Even in the LGBTQ plus community where you are expecting community, you don't always get it. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to change. It was an opportunity, I should say, for me to be able to build relationships with equals, she Barbados. Yes, guys, I plug in, so start searching. Equals, she Barbados, Pride Barbados, uh, Butterfly, Roll Event. So I was able to then... And start to, networking, yeah. Yeah, to start networking, connecting, building relationships Maybe. with these people, which would then be an addition to the community and pushing that whole community vibe. Did you get any backlash from Barbados? Uh, like other people outside of the LGBTQ plus community? As much as people would have maybe criticized or said certain things behind my back yeah. or anything, that's because they didn't know me. That's because I felt like a threat. That was because I was something new. And like heterosexual people, if you don't know anyone from the LGBTQ plus community, you can only go based on what movies show you, what the media shows yeah. you and therefore you get defensive as as a human being you get defensive so yes i may have experienced certain things from community or outside of the community but at the end of the day it is about knowledge it's about saying hi this is who i am this is what i bring to the table this is what i want to bring to the table this is how i will continue to bring this to the table and i'm gonna consistently show up and when i have bad days that's okay because we all have bad days don't ever let anything that anybody has to say about you your business your family anything drag you down make you feel sad make you feel anything because people gonna talk whether you want to hear it or not period boom and that's not everything, boo. <laughs> <laughs> For me, being an LGBTQ person, when any person approaches me and gives me any negative feedback or anything, my weapon is to educate. That's good, though. It's, it's important. It's much needed. And there, there, one, there needs to be a lot more visibility in Barbados, yeah. you know? And, and with visibility comes education. You know, it's an opportunity for us to have a moment to talk to people that aren't aware or aren't educated or in a sense ignorant to the LGBTQ plus community, it's our moment to em embrace that and shine a light on things that they don't know, right? So I think education is the biggest, most important thing. And by creating these LGBTQ events, you're creating more visibility too, which is so important. Yes, I'm right. What are some of the events that you guys host uh, or provide for the community? Well, we started doing like party, like themed events. 
And then we got into what I really, really wanted to do, um, which is games nights, beach lines. I called it the beach zest. Because that was a big thing. That was a big little word. Zest. So we called it the beach zest. Um, we had game nights and we had bar nights. Bar nights would be either having our own location, our own spot, or popping up at known bars to just have a drink. Um, nice. I also want to do a shameless plug to Aeon Bar and Grill because they have been really great at like supporting the LGBTQ plus community. And I'm not just talking about LGBTQ plus events, but also She Barbados and Equals with any of the things that had happened during Pride for the last two, three years. So they shout have, out to yeah. them. That is an ally um, business right there. I, I have to say I think thank it's good. You. No, no, I think because, it's important. Yeah. I think because a lot of companies are afraid to get involved with LGBTQ organizations or promotion in Barbados where I think it's important for us to acknowledge those who are taking the steps in progression. Yeah. In the world. I, and I, and I, so I say I commend you guys and I say thank you, not only for myself, but, you know, the entire community for showing up. Showing up for us. <laughs> Bam! No, I love that. Advice you would give to your younger self. Stay you, girl. Stay you. You're bad. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I wouldn't change anything about my life. I wouldn't change anything about my journey because my journey has literally made me the person that I am sitting before you today, this beautiful specimen. Oh, oh my. <laughs> Take it all in. <laughs> all of it. You saw it here first. Yeah. <laughs> you but... sure did. Shameless plug to me. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> Queer, baby. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. If you don't make a mistake once a week or once a day, then you have not lived. That's how I see it. Yeah. I mean, quote, a quote I live by is like, every challenging experience is a learning opportunity. Yeah. So it's just like, if you take your mistakes and you learn from them, you're not going to repeat them. It's the way we grow. You might repeat them. Let me just... You let might. Me you might repeat them because it might attention. be different. Yeah. Because I think we're always tested. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. To make sure that before you can be granted what you're supposed to be given to say you've completed your mission, you're tested. This is how I think. And generally, that's what the lesson is, to learn something about you, not about the world, not about anything else, but you. And that is how you live in it, how you recover from it, and how you grow from it. Knowledge is power. So it is what you do with that knowledge and if you implement it and if you hold yourself accountable and if you're able to reflect, if you're able to sit with yourself and say, I really did fudge up. I really did. You know, I could have handled this better. Yeah. And then know what triggered you, what threw you off, what made you act the way that you did. And you search for those answers. And when you do that, you're able to be this powerhouse of a person. Absolutely. So, I won't change a damn thing. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> what is one last message you would like to say to someone who is watching? Be patient. Be compassionate. Be understanding. Be loving. Whether it is to someone else or yourself. And be open to change. Be open to love and be open to understand. And that is my message to you guys. Ooh, awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on here and sharing your love and your energy and your positivity and just your message. I learned so much from you today and I'm, I'm grateful that we connected and um, I would love to eventually come to a LGBTQ event when things start opening back up here in Barbados. <laughs> But no, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This was yeah. fun. Yes. Thank you, Nadia, for coming on Queer, sharing your light, your energy, your smile, and your story. Thank you. She has taught me that Barbados is changing. There's a lot more visibility and spaces where people can be themselves. And keep following your dreams, even if they seem like they are impossible. Work hard, they will come true. The world is watching and you are a unique person with so much to offer.
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And ciao for now.